Assalamu alaikum students. So now we are going to start the next topic in an international finance. But before going into the details of the next topic, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give you the overview of our previous lecture. First of all, we discussed the common methods to conduct international business. Uh, what were those? Uh, it involved international trade, where I told you that it is the conventional or conservative method um, applied um, in international business. Uh, mostly people and countries prefer to have international trade with other countries and uh, it involves imports and exports. Um, usually because of the internet facility, uh, what's going on that due to a different time zone and due to different uh, language barriers and due to cultural barriers, uh, what uh, people prefer to have internet facility and they try to do their international trade on internet. How do they do that? As we discussed in our previous class, ke Websites generate kar di jati hai, uh, aapke business ki, un websites ke upar aap apne products ki prices ko mention kar dete hai. Um, agar koi foreign businessman ya foreign business aapke product mein interested hai, they will basically um, uh, give you the order or book an order online. Um, aapka objective ek must hona chahiye while having your international trade transactions on internet, ke website ko continuously update karna hai. To put your all the new prices, all the new information regarding your business must be there on your website. So obviously anyone who is sitting abroad and who, or anyone who wants to do business with you should have the recent information regarding your business, regarding the prices of your products and everything. So that is called international trade, which is the most conventional form and due to internet facility, it's becoming more and more famous now. Second criteria we discussed was the licensing uh, in which one country uh, company parent company give license to the other company in other country to run the same business and they uh, basically provide them the license. The only concern or the major concern for these types of businesses where the parent company is thinking is the quality assurance issue. That when you have license in another country, you license provide your own product to launch. Karne ka. So how would you do that? There will be an issue that you will check that your quality in your country parent company maintain kar rahi hai aur usi wajah se successful hai um, dusre country mein bhi uh, businesses usi tarah se run ho rahe hain jo parent company maintain kar rahi hai rules and regulations quality assurance everything will be included in that when you provide license to the other country or to the other business you want them to assure the best quality whatever parent company is adopting we also discussed the franchising business where sometimes brand names uh, or uh, the brand businesses they uh, allow you to have the franchise uh, usme aapko wo initial investment bhi provide kar dete hain aapko uh, amount de denge for initial investment and then they will ask you to run that business uh, with the help of those initial investments they will give you the quality and standards uh, uh, guidelines so they will assist you financially and also in guidance in other terms for the maintenance of the quality so when you start franchising in your country the other country or the parent company again is concerned about the quality and you have to maintain the same quality because you are using their brand names say for example gap ki example humne di ke gap ho, uh, ya phir nike ki example aap le le uh, in dono brands ki agar aapko franchising ke liye permission mil jati hai ya phir humne also we also discussed the mcdonald that if you get the permission to start mcdonald in pakistan so, aapko kis tarah se uh, quality maintain karni hai mcdonald in uk or mcdonald in any other country should have the same products or should have the same quality which is in pakistan that is franchising plus in case of uh, franchising jo parent company hai that will also provide you with initial investment so jab aapke paas initial investment aagi obviously it is in your favor to start the business of franchising and you are entering into international business on the other hand parent company ko benefit hai ke if they are starting franchising with as mcdonald in pakistan so they are starting mcdonald in pakistan with a reduced cost because they have given you initial investment di hai. they are not giving you the whole investment so parent company ko ye benefit hai ke wo aap se 
इन्वेस्टमेंट करवा रहे हैं आप ही के कंट्री में ऑन योर फाइनेंसिंग बट द क्वालिटी एंड स्टैंडर्ड विल बी द वन जो पेरेंट कंपनी मेंटेन कर रही है हाउएवर इनिशियल इन्वेस्टमेंट दे माइट प्रोवाइड यू बट अगेंस्ट दैट यू हैव टू रिटर्न दैट इनिशियल पेमेंट इन इंस्टॉलमेंट्स सो दैट इज franchising so if you want to do your business on international basis either you can go for international trade ya phir aap licensing kara sakte hain third otherwise you can go into the contract of franchising so when you are aware of these things we also discussed the joint ventures now joint venture is something where two companies in two different countries can come together for joint venture in the context of international business since we are talking about the international business and international finance so joint venture would be the one where two companies are having a contract with each other to launch as a joint venture what will happen one thing say so for example we discussed the xerox and nike uh, xerox and fuji that was the example xerox is the brand name in photocopying in all over the world that is the best brand for photocopying fuji is a good company in japan now xerox and fuji are entering into a contract for a joint venture what will happen xerox is taking the benefit that they are entering into japanese market however fuji is having the benefit that they are entering in a photocopying business so in joint venture basically the benefit is on the both sides xerox is getting benefit to enter into japanese market fuji is getting a benefit to enter into photocopying business so that is another method by which you can enter into international business so we discussed um, franchising licensing and international trade now coming on to the next uh, method which is joint ventures that is a contract between two countries on or the two companies in two different countries if we are discussing on international business standards so uh, we also discussed the example where we said that there are two companies one is xerox and the other one is fuji japan so um xerox and japan's company fuji are coming into a contract of joint venture what happens actually both the countries or both the companies are having benefit because of that joint venture uh, in joint venture fuji is entering into photing uh, photocopying business with xerox and as you know xerox is a brand name in all over the world so fuji has the benefit ke fuji agar photocopying business mein aa raha hai to wo xerox ke sath aa raha hai xerox ek brand name hai in all over the world so fuji apne aap ko photocopying ke business mein introduce kara raha hai under the name of xerox so what is the benefit to xerox then xerox has got the benefit that they are entering into japanese market which is a positive point for xerox company so both the companies are getting benefit out of it getting a joint venture on international standards and now they are moving along and basically they are trying to run a business where both of them will get the benefit then we discuss the acquisitions of existing operations uh, what is acquisition as we said that if in you are sitting in country a and the other business uh, the one who is trying to acquire your business is in sitting in country b um, since they want to acquire your business uh, and they then they have to if they want full acquisition then they have to get the full control of your company uh, we gave the example of procter and gamble who purchased the bleach company so in that case they are trying to have the full control of that bleach company now the contract is between the two countries there is a possibility ke bleach company apne country mein acha perform nahi kar rahi thi procter and gamble since they know ke unka name um, in products mein bahut acha hai and they are the leaders in those products so what happens procter and gamble is trying to acquire the bleach company and they are 
आर थिंकिंग कि अगर वो एक्वायर कर लेंगे ब्लीच कंपनी को और वही ब्लीच कंपनी जब प्रॉक्टर एंड गैम्बल के नेम के अंडर काम करेगी विथ फुल कंट्रोल ऑफ प्रॉक्टर एंड गैम्बल विद द सेम क्वालिटी विच प्रॉक्टर एंड गैम्बल प्रिफर सो वट विल हैपन द मैनिफिट विल बी फॉर प्रॉक्टर एंड गैम्बल on the other hand we also discussed since acquisition involve a lot of costs in that case what will happen ke procter and gamble ko chances hain that they will face loss to avoid that type of losses usually in international businesses what companies do they go for the partial type of investment and partial type of acquisition in partial acquisitions आपकी इन्वेस्टमेंट लो होती है आपके बेनिफिट्स ज्यादा होते हैं कॉस्ट्स कम इन्वॉल्व होती हैं और पार्शल कंट्रोल होता है आपके पास लाइक like, अगर आपने फुल एक्वायर किया है देन यू आर हैविंग फुल कंट्रोल हाउ अगर आपने पार्शली एक्वायर किया किसी फर्म को देन यू विल बी हैविंग अ पार्शल कंट्रोल ऑफ दैट कंपनी वट विल हैपन द कंपनी प्रॉक्टर एंड गैम्बल विल बी रिस्पॉन्सिबल partially will look after like they will be acquiring that bleach company on partial grounds so obviously they will not take the full control of the bleach company why because they don't want to procter and gamble don't want to involve themselves in full loss they are trying to get a partial investment and they are involving their low investments to get the benefits from the bleach company and in that case you will be controlling partially so that is partial acquisitions of existing operations establishing new foreign subsidiaries was also an option in which you will establish new foreign subsidiaries what will happen in that case when you involve or you launch new foreign subsidiaries basically you are going to enjoy the benefit of your tailor made operations इन एक्विजिशन वी डिस्कस्ड के आपके पास फुल कंट्रोल होता है या पार्शल कंट्रोल होता है हाउ एवर अगर आप अपनी नई फॉरन सब्सिडरीज लॉन्च कर रहे हैं इन फॉरन मार्केट क्या होगा ऑब्वियसली जितने ऑपरेशन होंगे वो आप खुद डिजाइन करेंगे सारे स्टैंडर्ड आप खुद डिजाइन करेंगे सो यूजली इट इज प्रिफर्ड टू हैव न्यू फॉरन सब्सिडरीज राधर देन एक्वायरिंग अ बिजनेस क्योंकि अगर फुल एक्विजिशन होगी कॉस्ट हायर होंगी पार्शल एक्विजिशन में आपके पास कंट्रोल पार्शल होगा हाउ एवर इफ यू आर लॉन्चिंग अ न्यू फॉरेन सब्सिडरी तो आपके पास टेलर मेड ऑपरेशंस अवेलेबल होंगे सो इफ यू वांट टू गो फॉर इंटरनेशनल बिजनेस देर आर फ्यू ऑप्शंस व्हिच इन्वॉल्व इधर यू गो फॉर इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड और यू गो फॉर लाइसेंसिंग थर्ड यू कैन गो फॉर फ्रेंचाइजिंग इफ नॉट फ्रेंचाइजिंग यू कैन गो फॉर ज्वाइंट वेंचर्स Finally, if you don't want joint ventures, you can acquire a firm on international basis. And finally, if you don't want any of these, you can also establish a new foreign subsidiary. All these options are available. That doesn't mean that you can go for only one option. However, you can also go for a mix of options. So, if you are doing acquisition, it doesn't mean that you can't do licensing. If you are doing franchising, that doesn't mean that you cannot launch a new subsidiary. You can mix and you can work on the international grounds by opting any of these options, whatever suits you. We also discussed the investment opportunities, and we said that uh, investment opportunities for multinational companies are higher than the domestic companies. Why? Because multinational companies operate कर रही हैं in internationally. So when they are moving internationally, so they are having more returns and opportunities, and they are having more investment opportunities as compared to domestic firms. क्योंकि डोमेस्टिक फर्म सिर्फ एक ही कंट्री में काम करेगी जबकि इंटरनेशनल फर्म विल वर्क इन इन्वेस्टमेंट स्टैंडर्ड्स इन डिफरेंट कंट्रीज तो जब आपके पास अपॉर्चुनिटीज ज्यादा अवेलेबल हैं इन डिफरेंट इंटरनेशनल कंट्रीज सो ऑब्वियसली इन्वेस्टमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटीज भी मल्टी के पास ज्यादा हैं ऑन द अदर हैंड वी ऑल्सो डिस्कस्ड द फाइनेंसिंग अपॉर्चुनिटीज Now, what are financing opportunities? Uh, when you are discussing or you are thinking in terms of financial opportunities, so because you are a multinational companies, you are operating in different countries, so financing options be आपके पास ज़्यादा हैं as compared to domestic companies. अगर आपको लोन चाहिए आपने एसेट साइज साइज इंक्रीज करना है अपनी कंपनी का and you want a loan and you are a multinational company, so obviously 
आपके पास अपॉर्चुनिटीज लोन लेने की ज्यादा है एज कंपेयर टू डोमेस्टिक फर्म्स वट यू नीड टू कंसिडर इज कि अगर आप अपना एसेट साइड साइज इंक्रीज कर रहे हैं फॉर इधर फॉर मल्टी नेशनल और डोमेस्टिक फर्म यू विल रिक्वायर मोर डेट बिकॉज इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल कि अगर आप अपना एसेट साइज इंक्रीज कर रहे हैं तो आपके पास सारी फाइनेंसिंग ऑलरेडी अवेलेबल हो अगर आप फाइनेंसिंग अपॉर्चुनिटीज अवेल करना चाह रहे हैं और आप फाइनेंसिंग कराना चाह रहे हैं इन दैट केस वट विल हैपन दैट यू विल नीड मोर डेट इफ यू विल नीड मोर डेट That means आपको इंस्टॉलमेंट भी ज्यादा पे करनी है इंटरेस्ट रेट भी ज्यादा पे ऑफ करना है देर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी अगर डेट बहुत बड़ा है सो यू वोट बी एबल टू पे दम बैक इन दैट केस आपकी कंपनी डिफॉल्ट हो जाएगी सो टू ऑप्ट प्रोजेक्ट और टू कंसिडर अ प्रोजेक्ट वट यू नीड टू डू इज द क्राइटेरिया विच वी डिस्कस्ड इन द डायग्राम दैट यू शुड फोकस ऑन मार्जिनल रिटर्न एंड मार्जिनल कॉस्ट for your upcoming projects or the businesses you want to run in future on international standards fine now you know what is marginal cost and you know what is marginal cost marginal returns uh, you, marginal returns are the returns which are generated from your new upcoming or additional projects and the marginal costs are the costs which are basically involved uh, while doing your businesses the business which you are uh, want to do on international standards the common sense which we discussed was that if marginal returns are greater than marginal costs then you should opt for the businesses if marginal costs are higher than marginal returns that means ki aapke paas costs jo hain wo marginal returns se zyada ho rahi hain aur in that case what you will do is that you will not opt for those product, uh, projects so marginal returns and marginal costs you have to consider and you have to focus on those marginal returns must be greater than marginal costs we also discussed the international opportunities available in europe like we know that in since 1990s international businesses are booming usually um, it was not the trend in the past before 1990s but after 1990s either it is europe america or asian economies international businesses are booming and growing the european countries decided that they should make a union and then what did they do they had a union of european countries and they tried to reduce the trade barriers so those european countries can have a trade among each other on easy grounds so european countries aapas mein aaram se business kar sake जब उन्होंने यूरोपियन यूनियन फॉर्म किया देन दे केम टू नो कि ऑब्वियसली करेंसी के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से उन सब कंट्रीज की अगर करेंसी डिफरेंट है तो जब वो आपस में ट्रेड करेंगे यूरोपियन कंट्रीज सो देर आर चांसेस के करेंसी फ्लक्चुएशंस होंगी और करेंसी क्राइसिस आएंगे वट दे डिड वॉज देन दे डिसाइडेड कि दे शुड हैव ऑल द यूरोपियन कंट्रीज शुड हैव वन सिंगल करेंसी विच दे नेम्ड एज यूरोज नाउ इन ऑल द यूरोपियन कंट्रीज यूरोज आर एक्सेप्टेड what happened after that the introduction or inception of your european currency euro jab sare countries mein use hogi to in sab countries ko aapas mein business karna easy ho jayega inki transactions ek country se dusre country euro ki basis pe hongi aur jab euro ki basis pe transactions hongi to currency fluctuation involved nahi hogi aur exchange rate risk involved nahi hoga which is a great trade barriers among nations among countries and european union try to avoid that by introducing a new currency and a common currency for all the european union countries after the establishment of european union they invited more members to join the group and a far um, apart from their expectations what happened that more and more countries joined the european union what happened they were given trade relaxations but the fees were charged now coming to the next lecture and our focus would be opportunities in latin america and asia in this lecture uh, we will also discuss a model for valuation of multinational companies then uh, since you 
uh, you know that if you want to do a business on international standards or international business so there are different methods okay fine you know what are the business methods then you also know that how to value a multinational company in this lecture when you will be done with these two then you have to know what is a balance of payment how do these countries trade with each other what are the criteria of exports and imports what happens if exports are greater than imports or what will happen if imports are greater than exports then we will also explain or discuss the international flow or flow of funds that can be affected by economic factors and any other factors fine uh, we discussed the opportunities in europe what european countries did to promote their uh, international trade now coming towards the latin american countries um, first of all the Nat uh, latin american countries um, signed so many contracts to have uh, free trade or trade with less barriers and um, a few examples are quoted here the north Agri american free trade agreement which is nafta of 1993 allowed us and Maxim uh, mexico to trade with less trade barriers they try to improve the trade agreements between us and mexico so trade barriers or jo difficulties thi in dono countries ke darmiyan to do their trade unko reduce kiya ja sake they remove the investment restrictions in many latin american countries in कॉन्ट्रैक्ट को साइन करने का या फिर इन अपॉर्चुनिटीज को अवेल करने का मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव ये था कि ट्रेड बैरियर्स को रिड्यूस किया जा सके इन लैटिन अमेरिकन कंट्रीज यूरोप की हमने एग्जाम्पल दी यूरोप एक अलहदा रीजन है लैटिन अमेरिका एक अलहदा रीजन है यूरोपियन कंट्रीज ने ट्रेड इंप्रूव किया इन यूरोपियन रीजन लेटिन अमेरिकन कंट्रीज फोकस्ड ऑन देयर ओन रीजन नेफ्टा साइन हुआ टू फेसिलिटेट द कंट्रीज इन लेटिन अमेरिकन रीजन and then they try to reduce the trade barriers in many latin american countries so latin american countries jo hain wo aapas mein freely ya phir less trade barriers ke sath international business promote kar sake some of the firms in different countries also capitalized by exporting products international trade start ho gaya products ki export start ho gayi aur unhone goods ko export karna start kar diya in latin american countries or on the other sides um, some of the countries started to uh, establish their subsidiaries in mexico which is a part of latin american countries then after uh, latin american countries as we discussed in 1990s onwards either it is european countries or latin american countries or it is asia all the world countries started to develop towards international business since they know kuch countries ne uh, international business and international trade ko bahut quickly adopt kiya kuch countries ne response thoda sa slow diya uh, kuch countries the jo ke closed economies thi jinke liye open up karna apne borders ko for international trade uh, was a big thing and they thought that it might be risky to open up their borders for the international trade however on the other side there were the developed economies who opened up their border for international trade since they knew it ki unhe specialized products ka benefit lena hai ya comparative advantage lena hai and they try to open up their borders as quickly as they can so uh, different regions made trade barriers ko remove karke different countries ne aapas mein agreement kiye to promote their growth rates um, now coming to the asian region uh, एशियन रीजन में भी इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड इंट्रोड्यूस हुआ आफ्टर नाइनटीन नॉट ऑल द कंट्रीज इन एशियन रीजन स्ट्रेट वे अडॉप्टेड द इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड स्टैंडर्ड्स एंड नॉट ऑल ऑफ देम स्टार्टेड टू अडॉप्ट एट अ टाइम बट सम ऑफ देम स्टार्टेड क्विकली एंड सम ऑफ देम वर रिलेक्टेंट टू स्टार्ट इंटरनेशनल बिजनेसिस बट नाउ इफ वी फोकस ऑन एनी कंट्री इन द वर्ल्ड मोस्ट ऑफ देम और आई कुड से दैट mostly 90% of the countries or more than 90% of the country they are moving towards growth by applying international businesses in their practices some examples uh, involved uh, the pepsi coke apple general motors uh, procter and gamble etc so these are the example who moved after 1990s into asian region and they started to do the business in this region 
1997 and 1998, uh, there was severe Asian crisis that hit the Indonesian uh, economy, Malaysian economy and Thailand economy. Since you are uh, opening the borders for international transaction, for international trade, obviously you know it, if you are doing business in Pakistan, fine. Because um, environmental conditions are different, your uh, government is different, your currency is different. In that case, what will happen? Trade is easy hai in Islamabad to Karachi, Karachi to Lahore, that type of thing. But when you are involving your country in international business, so obviously you are exposing to different types of risks as well. Because you want to try a benefit, you want to get a benefit out of international business. So obviously, where benefits are more, there risks are more. If you have opened international level, pe apne borders open kiye hai, for international trade and you are trying to get the benefit of international trade then you should follow the regulations the trade regulations any wrongdoing can take you to the financial crisis koi chote minor issue agency problem jis tarah humne discuss kiya tha ki manager aur uh, principal ke darmiyan conflict ho sakta hai isi tarah ka koi problem koi agency problem between the two countries managers ya koi kisi kism ka issue will lead your whole economy towards crisis that happened in 1997 to 1998 which led Asian crisis and it involved the major countries who were affected by that were Indonesia, Malaysia and Thailand. In these crises, many companies went bankrupt and faced capital outflows. Generally, international businesses usually increase an in MNC's exposure towards exchange rate movements. As I told you, that when you international standard, when you are thinking internationally Pakistan se bahir business karne ka soch rahe, what will happen? First thing, the main thing, you will expose ho towards exchange rate fluctuation. If you are doing business with Europe, with America, with any other country, obviously, your currency and their currency ki strength may be different and value may be different. When you convert your currency to that currency ke against another currency, ke against convert karenge, maybe price is different today, tomorrow is something else. Uh, due to any other reason, your currency is devalued and by the end of the month, your currency ki value is different. Hai. This is called currency fluctuation. In that case, obviously, Trading with that country in the start of the month would be different trading with the same country in the end of the month because exchange rate fluctuations hai. Aap same currency ko jab convert karte in the start of the month, aap ke paas amount different hai. However, jab aap same currency ko convert karte hai, at the end of the month to do the payment, amount is different. That is called currency fluctuation. So when you are doing business with foreign countries, so basically you are exposing to exchange rate movements. You are exposed to foreign economies. Obviously, there are different factors when you are doing business, international business with different foreign countries. There are different criteria, rules and regulations. You are exposed to different types of cultural barriers and so many other things which you are exposed to. Again, the governments are different. When you are dealing with different countries, so the government criteria is different. They have different rules. They have different regulations. The government sometimes gives subsidies. Sometimes they strict the rules, the countries in which you are doing business. They have strict rules as compared to your countries. You are not used to it. Then obviously there is a problem. So when you are doing international business, first thing you will be exposed to international uh, exchange rate risks. Secondly, obviously, you will be exposed to foreign economies. And finally, there is a possibility that you will be facing political risk. Um, since exchange rate risk movements, as I discussed, these are the important ones and you are exposed to it. So let's discuss it in detail. Exchange rate of um, or exchange of one currency in another to make payments is necessary when you are doing international business. As I said, exchange rate mein fluctuations aayengi. Aaj currency ki price different hai, kal aap ki currency ki price different hai. Aaj aap uh, uh, two dollars ko convert karte hai paak rupees mein, you get 120. Same two dollars jab aap kal convert karenge um, uh, rupees mein, maybe you will get 120. 
एटीन और हंड्रेड एंड सेवनटीन आफ्टर फाइव मंथ्स आप सेम टू डॉलर्स को कन्वर्ट करेंगे रुपीज में अगर तो डॉलर स्ट्रेंथन हो गया इन दैट केस आप यू माइट गेट हंड्रेड एंड टेन या हंड्रेड एंड फाइव सो ऑब्वियसली आपके प्रॉफिट रिड्यूस हो रहे हैं इन दैट केस ऑब्वियसली इट इज एक्सचेंज रेट मूवमेंट एक्सचेंज रेट फ्लक्चुएट ओवर द टाइम तो जितना टाइम पास होता है ऑब्वियसली एक्सचेंज रेट एक जगह पर स्टैंड नहीं करेगा एक्सचेंज रेट मूव कर रहा है वेन अ करेंसी स्ट्रेंथन और अप्रिशिएट से फॉर एग्जाम्पल पाकिस्तानी करेंसी अप्रिशिएट हो रही है या उसकी वैल्यू स्ट्रॉन्ग हो रही है या फिर स्ट्रेंथन हो रही है वॉट विल हैपन प्रोडक्ट डिनोमिनेटेड इन दैट करेंसी लेट से पाकिस्तानी करेंसी बिकम्स मोर एक्सपेंसिव टू फॉरन कस्टमर्स सो अगर तो आपकी करेंसी स्ट्रॉन्ग हो रही है पाक रूपी स्ट्रॉन्ग हो रहा है तो फॉरन कस्टमर्स जो आपके साथ बिजनेस करना चाहते हैं नाउ दे हैव टू पे मोर इन दैट केस आपके प्रोडक्ट एक्सपेंसिव हो गए हैं फॉरन कस्टमर्स के लिए जब आपके प्रोडक्ट फॉरन कस्टमर्स के लिए एक्सपेंसिव हो जाएंगे वट विल हैपन इट विल डिक्लाइन द डिमांड ऑफ योर प्रोडक्ट सिंस यू नो एक्सचेंज रेट में क्या हुआ है कि आपकी करेंसी स्ट्रेंथन हो गई है आपकी करेंसी स्ट्रेंथन होने की वजह से एक्सचेंज रेट डिफरेंस आया है जिसकी वजह से फॉरन कस्टमर्स आपके प्रोडक्ट को हाई प्राइसिस पे खरीदेंगे और प्रोडक्ट्स आपके कंट्री की प्रोडक्ट्स एक्सपेंसिव हो गई हैं अब आपको डिमांड और सप्लाई का क्राइटेरिया का तो आइडिया होगा कि जब आपकी प्राइसिस इंक्रीज होती हैं डिमांड रिड्यूस हो जाती है सेम गोज हियर कि जब आपकी प्रोडक्ट्स की प्राइस इंटरनेशनल बिजनेस के केस में इंक्रीज हो रही है तो फॉरेन कस्टमर्स के लिए आपके प्रोडक्ट्स एक्सपेंसिव होते जा रहे हैं व्हाट विल बी हैपनिंग दैट फॉरेन कस्टमर्स विल प्रिफर टू गेट द सेम थिंग फ्रॉम समवेयर एल्स रादर देन बाइंग इट फ्रॉम योर कंट्री एंड इन दैट केस डिमांड डिक्लाइन कर जाएगी That will also lead to the decline in the cash flows of your business. जो आपके cash flows inflows आ रहे थे वो reduce हो जाएंगे In the currency of parent company is strong, so the remitted funds will convert into small amounts. जितना मैंने अभी आपको explain किया कि अगर पाकिस्तान फॉर एग्जाम्पल पेरेंट कंपनी पाकिस्तान में है तो अगर एक्सचेंज रेट फ्लक्चुएशन आ रही है तो पेरेंट कंपनी के लिए रिमिटेड फंड रिड्यूस हो जाएंगे now let's uh, have an overview of the multinational companies uh, cash flows first thing in this diagram you we are focusing on those multinational companies who basically do their international business only on the basis of international trade let me repeat that hum is slide mein उन मल्टीनेशनल कंपनीज को फोकस कर रहे हैं जिनका बिजनेस सिर्फ इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड के थ्रू हो रहा है नाउ ऑन योर लेफ्ट बॉक्स व्हिच इज यूएस बेस्ड एमएनसी तो आपकी यूएस बेस्ड मल्टीनेशनल कंपनीज है ऑन योर राइट हैंड साइड यूएस कस्टमर्स एंड यूएस बिजनेसेस से आपकी पेमेंट्स हो भी रही है और पेमेंट फॉर सप्लाईज जा भी रही है तो एक एरो के थ्रू आप पेमेंट्स ले रहे हैं और दूसरे एरो के थ्रू आप पेमेंट्स दे रहे हैं टू यूएस बिजनेसेस in the bottom part since you are doing international trade so you have foreign importers and foreign exporters also to aapke paas foreign importers bhi hain aur aap apne products foreign countries mein exports bhi kar rahe hain cash flow pe kya impact aayega ki in arrows ke through aap apni payments check kar sakte hain ki payments from exports bhi aa rahi hain aur payments de bhi rahe hain aap jahan par aap imports kar rahe hain so when you are doing international trades so either you are making payments for the products or you are getting payments for the products on the other hand you might be paying for the supplies similarly when you are running your international trade obviously so you will be involving foreign importers and foreign exporters तो अगर फॉरेन इंपोर्टर्स और फॉरेन एक्सपोर्टर्स इन्वॉल्व हैं कैश फ्लो में क्या इंपैक्ट आएगा कि आपके पास पेमेंट्स फ्रॉम एक्सपोर्ट्स आएंगी और पेमेंट्स फ्रॉम इंपोर्ट्स जाएंगी सो दैट मींस आपके बिजनेस में या ये जो एग्जांपल दी है जिसमें यूएस बेस्ड मल्टीनेशनल कंपनी इन्वॉल्व है वट विल बी हैपनिंग दैट 
आपके पास इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडर्ड पे एक्सपोर्ट्स के पेमेंट्स रिसीव होंगे और इंपोर्ट्स के पे होंगे Now in this diagram you can focus the difference of the cash flow is on the on the grounds that this multinational company is focused on international trade licensing joint ventures and franchising so what will be the difference of the cash flow first thing as we discussed international trade ka part top 2 aapke jo uh, uh, groups hain they are same because international trade to ho raha hai lekin is company ne इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड के साथ साथ लाइसेंसिंग जॉइंट वेंचर्स और फ्रेंचाइजिंग भी की हुई है सो so, आपके जो कैश फ्लो होंगे इन टर्म्स ऑफ इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड वो तो वो कैश फ्लोज हैं वेयर यू आर एक्सपोर्टिंग द प्रोडक्ट्स एंड इंपोर्टिंग द प्रोडक्ट्स तो या तो कैश आउटफ्लो हो रहा है या कैश इनफ्लो हो रहा है बॉटम पार्ट में अगर आप देखें विच इज बेसिकली रिलेटेड टू योर लाइसेंसिंग ज्वाइंट वेंचर्स और फ्रेंचाइजिंग वेयर यू हैव फॉरन फर्म्स and you are either getting the fees for the services you are providing or you are basically making a payment for the services which you are receiving so that is the cash inflow and cash outflow in terms of those businesses where the inter international business is being run by international trade licensing joint ventures and franchising so the cash flow would be of this type where you will be involving international trade along with the other criteria or the other methods involving licensing franchising and joint ventures now let's focus on this diagram where the multinational companies which is the us based firm focused on international trade international agreements now international agreements are basically those which involve your licensing franchising and joint ventures and this firm also focus along with all those criteria this involves direct foreign investments too so in this case the cash flow for the multinational company would become like this that you are also getting payments for your exports on the other hand you are paying for your imports so that is the criteria for international trades you are getting fees for the services provided in terms of international agreements on the other hand you are paying fees for the services which you have received in terms of international agreements finally the bottom part of this diagram which says foreign subsidiaries either you will remit the funds back or you will be giving the investment funds so all those criteria is when you are doing international businesses so you can involve either the international trade you can undergo the international agreements and you can involve the direct and foreign investment and the cash flow for all these criteria would be like this diagram that either you are paying for your services either you are paying for your services which you are receiving or you are getting funds for the services or trade you are doing now as i said that we will be discussing the valuation models of the business so first discuss the domestic model now what happens in domestic model the value of domestic model would be equals to summation t equals to 1 and up to n where expected cash flows to be received at the end of period is in the numerator form while the required rate of return by the investor is in denominator now in simple words aapke jo cash flow expected hain from uh, ya jo receive hone hain at the end of period t aapke टॉप पार्ट ऑफ द फॉर्मूला में है एन रिप्रेजेंट करता है नंबर ऑफ पीरियड्स इन टू फ्यूचर इन विच कैश फ्लोज आर टू बी रिसीव तो आपके समेशन के ऊपर टाइम का जो दिया हुआ है टी इक्वल्स टू वन टू एन दैट मीन्स अगर आप टेन ईयर्स की ट्रांजेक्शन को नोट कर रहे हैं तो दिस वुड बिकम टी इक्वल्स टू वन टू टेन सो एन इज योर नंबर ऑफ पीरियड्स इन द फ्यूचर इन विच कैश फ्लोज आर रिसीव्ड 
एक्सपेक्टेड कैश फ्लो में आई वुड लाइक यू टू फोकस ऑन वन थिंग कि क्योंकि आपके ये डोमेस्टिक मॉडल डिस्कस हो रहा है सो इन दिस केस वी आर फोकसिंग ओनली ऑन वन करेंसी दैट इज डॉलर आपके एक्सपेक्टेड सी एफ जहां पर लिखा है देर इज अब्सक्रिप्ट विच से डॉलर कॉमा टी सो दैट मीन्स ये कैश फ्लो फोकस कर रही है इन टर्म्स ऑफ डॉलर ओनली इन टर्म्स ऑफ वन करेंसी इन विथ कॉमा टी दैट इज द टाइम से एज वी डिस्कस्ड के हम टाइम ले लेते हैं टेन ईयर्स का तो आपके डॉलर इन टर्म्स ऑफ टेन ईयर्स को डिस्कस कर रहा है क्योंकि ये डोमेस्टिक मॉडल है इन यूएस इकोनॉमी अगर आप इसको पाकिस्तान की एग्जाम्पल लेके डिस्कस करें तो एक्सपेक्टेड कैश फ्लो ऑफ पाक रुपीज इन टर्म्स ऑफ टेन रुपीज टेन ईयर्स सो आपके एक्सपेक्टेड कैश फ्लो जो है दैट इज इक्वल टू एक्सपेक्टेड कैश फ्लो ऑफ टू बी रिसीव एट द एंड ऑफ पीरियड टी विच इज टेन ईयर्स द नंबर ऑफ पीरियड इन टू द फ्यूचर इन विच कैश फ्लो आर रिसीव टी इज टाइम एन इज द नंबर ऑफ ईयर्स एंड देन द रिक्वायर्ड रेट ऑफ रिटर्न बाय इन्वेस्टर इज डिनोटेड बाय के सो दिस इज द होल क्राइटेरिया बाय विच यू कैन फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ योर डोमेस्टिक बिजनेस now moving on to the international standards one major thing which you will focus in this model valuing international cash flows here is the formula for that now as i said that you will uh, be focusing only in dollars in terms of domestic criteria now let's focus on this formula where expected cash flow is in terms of j comma t expected cash flow of denomin denominated in currency j to be received by the us parent at the end of period t so in this formula basically aapka do currencies involve ho gayi hain kyunki expected cash flow which is denominated in currency j one currency to be received by us parent at the end of period t so obviously kisi aur currency ko dollar mein convert karna because you are talking about international cash flows second aapka jo part hai that is expected return j comma t which is the expected exchange rate at which currency j can be converted to dollars at the end of the period t so there is a difference between domestic model and international model in domestic model we were concerned about only dollars if we were talking about us economy if we were uh, thinking in terms of pakistani economy so domestic model was the one where we are focusing only on one currency which is pak rupees and we were concerned about the time period that what will be the cash flow in 10 years in terms of pak rupees in terms of this model which is valuing international cash flows aap focus kar rahe hain exchange rate ke upar bhi aur aap also focus you are also focusing on the cash flows denominated in currency j in terms of us currency kyunki aap dusre country ke sath trade kar rahe hain to obviously exchange rate will be involved aur jab exchange rate beech mein involve hoga then you have to convert one currency into the other currency which is represented as j in this formula finally k is the weighted average of cost of capital of any multinational company now let's focus on the impact of financial management and international conditions on the value a multinational company will decide how much business to conduct in each country and how much financing to be obtained in each currency a multinational company's financial decisions determines its exposure to international environment so obviously financial decisions jo hain that will help you to focus on that how much exposure you want in international environment an mnc can control its degree of exposure uh, to exchange rate changes economic conditions political conditions with its financial management 
Now till now we have discussed everything regarding the opening uh, international business and what type of risks you will face when you are opening up your new business in international standards and what are the valuation criteria in different businesses in on international standards. So uh, when you are done with the decision that fine your product has been matured in the domestic market and you want to launch your product into international markets, there comes the concept where you will be focusing on different types of criteria of entering into the market and we have discussed all those criteria. Uh, once done with the methods that okay fine you have chosen franchising joint venture or any other method for uh, your business then you have to focus on the cash flows of the your business either it is domestic business or international business but since we are talking about international finance so our focus would be more on the international financial transactions and you will be focusing more on international transaction how do they take place and we have discussed the different models and different criteria for international cash flows where you are basically doing your business on international trade or international agreements or foreign direct investments etc either you are getting payments from the exports or you are making payments for your imports if you are clear about all these concepts so here comes an important concept which is called the balance of payment the balance of payment is a summary of transaction between domestic and foreign residents for a specific country over a specific a specified period of टाइम सो जो ट्रांजेक्शन आप किसी दूसरे कंट्री के साथ कर रहे हैं उनकी रिकॉर्ड कीपिंग विल कम अंडर द हेड ऑफ बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट्स के आप किसी कंट्री के साथ कितना बिजनेस कर रहे हैं इट रिप्रेजेंट एन अकाउंटिंग ऑफ कंट्रीज इंटरनेशनल ट्रांजेक्शन बाय बिजनेस इंडिविजुअल्स और गवर्नमेंट सो बेसिकली अकाउंटिंग हो रही है आपकी जैसे अकाउंटिंग में आप बुक कीपिंग करते हैं इसी तरह बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट में यू आर ट्राइंग टू कीप अ बुक रिकॉर्ड ऑफ योर ट्रांजेक्शन विद एनी अदर इंटरनेशनल बिजनेस दिस विल ऑल्सो रिकॉर्ड योर इनफ्लोज ऑफ फंड दैट जेनरेट क्रेडिट फॉर द कंट्री एंड आउटफ्लोज ऑफ फंड विच आर रिकॉर्डेड एज द डेबिट्स ऑफ द कंट्री सो अगर तो आपके पास एक्सपोर्ट्स की पेमेंट्स आ रही है अगर आपके पास इनफ्लोज हो रहे हैं पेमेंट्स के सो दे आर कॉल्ड योर इन क्रेडिट्स कमिंग टू योर कंट्री हाउ अगर आप ज्यादा इंपोर्ट्स कर रहे हैं और आपकी पेमेंट के आउटफ्लोज हैं सो बेसिकली दे आर जनरेटेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ डेबिट्स सो बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट के अंडर अगर आपके पास इनकम आ रही है कैश इनफ्लो है दैट विल बी क्रेडिटेड अगर आपके पास बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट में आउटफ्लोज हो रहे हैं कैश फ्लोज के पेमेंट्स जा रही हैं, सो दैट विल बी योर डेबिट सो योर अकाउंट विल बी डेबिटेड ओवर देयर अ बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट स्टेटमेंट कैन बी ब्रोकन डाउन इन टू डिफरेंट पार्ट बट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट इन विच वी आर कंसर्न फॉर द बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट आर दीज वन फर्स्ट वन इज कॉल्ड करंट अकाउंट एंड द अदर वन इज कॉल्ड कैपिटल अकाउंट so you can focus on either the current account and also the capital account when you are focusing on balance of payment of any country now coming to these two uh, concept first of all we have current account that summarizes the flow of funds between one country and all other countries due to purchase of goods or provision of services and also if you are providing income or financial assets so current account kya hai ye ek summary hai un flow of funds ki between the countries से फॉर एग्जाम्पल एक कंट्री दूसरे कंट्री के साथ जितना बिजनेस कर रहा है करंट अकाउंट रिकॉर्ड कीपिंग करेगा उन ट्रांजेक्शन की या उन फ्लो ऑफ फंड्स की बिटवीन दोज कंट्रीज जो कि इधर आपके एक्सपोर्ट करने से हो रहे हैं या इंपोर्ट करने से हो रहे हैं सो करंट अकाउंट बेसिकली क्या है ये रिकॉर्ड कीपिंग है तमाम उन ट्रांजेक्शन की या उन फ्लो ऑफ फंड की जो कि एक कंट्री से दूसरे कंट्री तक ट्रेड के अगेंस्ट इधर आप रिसीव कर रहे हैं या फिर आप पे कर रहे हैं एंड ड्यू टू द परचेजेज ऑफ गुड्स और सर्विसेज या फिर ऑन द प्रोविजन ऑफ इनकम और फाइनेंशियल एसेट्स करंट अकाउंट को फर्दर हम डिवाइड कर सकते हैं 
डिफरेंट क्राइटेरिया में जिनमें आपके बैलेंस ऑफ ट्रेड फैक्टर इनकम और ट्रांसफर पेमेंट इन्वॉल्व हो जाते हैं सो वेन यू आर फोकसिंग ऑन योर करंट अकाउंट वन थिंग द मेन अकाउंट हेड इज बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट के बीच में आपके करंट अकाउंट और कैपिटल अकाउंट आते हैं When you discuss current accounts, so this is the record of flow of funds between one specified country to all other countries where we are doing our transactions. And more specific grounds, if you want to consider it, then your current account further can be divided into balance of trade, factor income, and transfer payments. Now coming to the other part of balance of payment head. which is our capital account in case of capital account what will happen what does it do the capital account summarizes the flow of fund resulting from the sale of assets between one country to all other countries and it involves the financial transactions in terms of direct foreign investment portfolio investment and अदर कैपिटल इन्वेस्टमेंट सो जब आप बात करते हैं कैपिटल अकाउंट की सो इट विल डील इन टू दीज थ्री हेड्स फर्स्ट वन इज डायरेक्ट फॉरन इन्वेस्टमेंट एज वी डिस्कस्ड अर्लियर के डायरेक्ट फॉरन इन्वेस्टमेंट क्या है जब आप किसी भी दूसरे कंट्री में अपनी फाइनेंशियल ट्रांजेक्शन या फाइनेंशियल टर्म्स लॉन्च कर रहे होते हैं इन इंटरनेशनल बिजनेस दैट कम्स अंडर द हेड ऑफ डायरेक्ट फॉरन इन्वेस्टमेंट सेकेंडली पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टमेंट in general terms when we are talking about portfolio so portfolio is basically a basket of investments ke general terms mein ya finance mein jab aap portfolio investment ki baat karte hain so it means that you are having different options to invest agar aapke paas ek portfolio hai jisme aap invest karna chahte hain say for example you want to invest 100000 into portfolio और उस हंड्रेड थाउजेंड को आप कुछ इस तरह से इन्वेस्ट करना चाहते हैं कि आप उसको फुल रिस्की एरियाज में ना इन्वेस्ट करें बिकॉज यू डोंट वांट टू लूज अ लॉट फ्रॉम योर हंड्रेड थाउजेंड रुपीज यू कैन आस्क योर फाइनेंशियल मैनेजर कि ओके फाइन आई वांट अ पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टमेंट इन्वेस्ट माई हंड्रेड थाउजेंड रुपीज इन डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज डाइवर्सीफाई कर दें अपनी इन्वेस्टमेंट को और आपकी इन्वेस्टमेंट हंड्रेड थाउजेंड रुपीज की डिफरेंट क्राइटेरियाज में इन्वेस्ट कर दी जाए किन क्राइटेरिया में या किन कैटेगरीज में यू कैन इन्वेस्ट इन शेयर्स और यू कैन इन्वेस्ट इन बॉन्ड्स अगर आप फुल रिस्की एरियाज में जाना चाहते हैं फॉर 50 परसेंट ऑफ द अमाउंट यू कैन आस्क योर फाइनेंस मैनेजर दैट ओके फाइन आई वांट टू इन्वेस्ट इन टू रिस्की पार्ट फॉर माई हाफ ऑफ द मनी वाइल ऑन द अदर हाफ आई वॉन्ट टू प्ले कंप्लीटली सेफ एंड आई वॉन्ट कंप्लीट सेफ इन्वेस्टमेंट आउट ऑफ इट सो either you can invest in t bills or any other um, uh, zero coupon bonds or any other bonds where you feel the risks are low so agar to aap ek blend bana rahe hain apni investment ka that is portfolio investment in this uh, criteria when we are discussing the capital account so after direct foreign investment either you are having your portfolio investment from one country to the other country and in this case we are talking about the long term transactions in the end we will discuss the final category of your capital account which is your capital investment when you are having your capital investment this is basically your short term investment and when you are having your short term investment with the other countries or um, with any other uh, international business that will involve money market instruments or money market criteria so it will come under the head of capital investment now what is money market any financial instrument or anything which has the maturity less than 1 years is called money market instrument so in your capital investment account we are basically dealing with those criterias where we are discussing the money market instruments so balance of payment is blend of current account or capital account when we discussed current account so it is basically recording the transactions of your capital or of your cash inflows and outflows when we are discussing the capital account so it is basically recording the transactions on the basis of either direct foreign investment portfolio investment that is the long term investment or 
capital investment which is the short term investment so it will cover all these criteria so we will discuss the further components of current account and capital account in detail in our next lecture um, now we are going to uh, overview the whole lecture what we have discussed till now first thing um, as we discussed that when you are doing international business so it was not quite common in uh, uh, before 1990s um, after 1990s it became a common practice or it was becoming famous for the businesses to go abroad or to get international businesses so all the countries were trying uh, to all the developed countries were basically moving fast towards the internationalization concept however However, there were some other countries who were uh, closed countries, closed economies, who were not basically ready for the interaction on the international standards. So what happened was uh, that different developed countries started to develop and different uh, developed countries started to uh, start international trade with other developed countries and they opened up their border for their international transactions. Um, on the other hand, some conservative countries or some countries who were trying to to uh, hold back or who didn't want to involve themselves in international business were holding back and they were not doing any effort to uh, go for internationalization then in uh, after 1990s since it was accepted that if you want to live in this world on a proper standard then you have to move on to the international business standards and in that case different economies and different regions started to work on those criteria where they can reduce trade barriers and they can facilitate international businesses first of all we discussed the latin american countries where they signed the nafta agreement and in uh, due to the nafta agreement it was quite convenient for the latin american countries to trade with us or Mexico and they opened up the borders and they open up they give the facility for the less trade barriers and less taxes for these countries so the trade can be improved in Latin American region so what happened that in Latin America trade started to develop and when we are saying trade so it is international trade after that we also discussed that Europe was also the one who was among the economies who tried to facilitate international trade and they started the European Union and then they started to have a common currency among the countries which was Euro introduced in uh, 1990s, late 1990s and then they started to have their European Union. When they had their European Union so they thought to have the international trade among European countries free of barriers and free of exchange rate fluctuations that promoted the transactions on international standards among European economies. In late 1990s, Asian economies also started to boom and they also started to internationalize their businesses. When they moved towards the concept of international businesses, in late 1990s, as we discussed that the countries which involved Malaysia, Indonesia and Thailand, they came to a, a, a encounter the financial crisis. So in late 1990s, Asian countries involving um, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia and Thailand, they faced severe financial crisis. Due to those financial crises, many companies went bankrupt why did it happen because as we discussed ke agar aap international business kar rahe hain to scenarios different hain aapka country dusre countries ke against currency differently move kar raha hai that means aapki currency ki value dusre currency ki value se different hai in that case aap exchange rate risk ko face kar rahe hain secondly there is a possibility of different facing different foreign economies Thirdly, we discussed different political reasons. So all these criteria can take you towards financial crisis if you are not following proper financial regulations. So when you are opening your borders for international transactions, there comes a thing which is financial regulations which are a must for international business. If you are international business, kar rahe hai, so you have to follow the international regulations. You should try to avoid agency problems as much as you can.
so there shouldn't be any hidden information there shouldn't be any um, conflict of information or conflict of opinion between different manager because it can lead to you towards financial crisis then we also discuss the multinational cash flows with different aspects that if the multinational is moving only on the conservative grounds of international trades so you will be having two links whether you are getting payments or you are making payments for your imports on international businesses so the we discussed three different cash flows cash flow a cash flow b and cash flow c three profiles of multinational companies we have discussed in first one where the multinational company is basically trying to have only international trade as their international business in profile b we discussed the businesses where multinational company is having international trade along with the international agreements when we say international agreements so these are the agreements which are involving franchising joint ventures and international trade so all for these criteria these are international trade agreements in profile c we involve those multinational companies where the cash flow involved the outflows and inflows from the methods of international trade international agreements and foreign direct investment also so the three profiles were discussed the only difference was that in first one where international trade was concerned we were basically focusing on the payments which we are making for our imports and the uh, payments which we are receiving against our exports in terms of international agreements there was another uh, head included in profile b where we were either receiving fees for the services which we are providing to international businesses in terms of franchising in terms of your licensing or in terms of joint ventures or in other case whether we are making payments for the services we are taking in terms of licensing joint ventures or franchising finally in the third one we had another head included that involved the payments made for or payments received for direct foreign investment then we also discuss the balance of payment criteria because when you know that how to run a business in international countries or in foreign countries so you should know that okay fine these are the methods by which you can do the business there how you can have your cash flow in which either you can get payment or you can make payment then when you know that how to make payment and how to receive payment the most important thing is that you should know how to record these payments and to know to record these payment is called your balance of payment that whether you are going to make the payment in your credit head or in your debit head if the payment is coming to your country that means it is going to be credited in your account if the payment is going out of your country so that will be debited in your country's account all these things will come under the head of your balance of payment that we discussed where you are basically trying to keep a record of your all the international transactions then we discussed that the balance of payment can be divided into two further parts one is called your current account and the other one is called your capital account current account is the one where you can subdivide this category into balance of trade factor income and transfer payments while the other account which is your capital account is the one where you can divide this into portfolio investment capital investment and direct foreign investment there is a difference between portfolio investment and capital investment that portfolio investment would be a long term one while this the capital investment should be a short term investment now there is another point which is a point of focus for you all that different countries have different trade volumes we will discuss in detail in our lec next lecture that uh, the main concept of this thing is ke different countries mein trade volume different hai ट्रेड वॉल्यूम क्या है कि आप किसी कंट्री से कितना इंपोर्ट और कितना एक्सपोर्ट करते हैं या फिर आपकी कंट्री का टोटल ट्रेड आपकी कंट्री के जीडीपी के कितने परसेंट है 
से फॉर एग्जाम्पल पाकिस्तान का ट्रेड वॉल्यूम फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ इट्स जी डी पी है दैट मीन पाकिस्तान में फोर्टी परसेंट ट्रेड इम्पोर्ट एंड एक्सपोर्ट की फॉर्म में हो रही है जिसकी परसेंटेज जी डी पी के हिसाब से फोर्टी परसेंट है सो एंड द फाइनल थिंग विच वी हैव ऑलरेडी कंसिडर्ड कि ओवरऑल द वर्ल्ड इज मूविंग टूवर्ड्स द डिवेलपमेंट फेज ऑफ इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड आफ्टर नाइनटीन whether the countries were uh, closed economies or open economies uh, some countries have accepted easily and some countries have moved quickly towards internationalization and towards international business while the other countries have moved on with a small pace or with a slow pace so that slow pace is one where the closed economies are not moving towards internationalization with fast speed and they are reluctant to go internationalized so in that case now the world whole world every country has admitted the fact that if they have to live in this world they have to open up their borders for the international transactions but along with those international transactions they should keep it in their mind that financial regulations are important since we are discussing the international finance uh, finance criteria so international financial transactions are our main point of view if you will not focus on financial regulations there are bright chances that your country will be trapped into financial crisis